new philosophy. It's no longer about the gear chasing because I know happiness doesn't come from the next best thing. Another beautiful day. We just put up this windmill today in part of our garden. It's massive. It's like double the height of our old one, but it's pretty cool. But it's a beautiful day. We're here September 1st. And today we're gonna go in and talk about something different. So if it's the best I've ever heard, and it's an end game amp or end game speaker, and I bought these pieces, why on earth would I sell them uh, months later? I've received a few emails over the last few weeks, maybe three or four. And one just came in the other day and it was, he asked me, he said, Steve, I watched your review or I read your review of the Avic U150 uh, integrated amp and you raved about it and you said it was the best integrated amp you've ever experienced. Why on earth did you sell it? It makes no sense. Uh, I had others say, where's your Fleetwood DeVilles that you loved and adored and they were your end game speakers. Why did you sell them? If they're your end game speakers, why on earth did you move them out of your house and get rid of them? Uh, and I recently sold uh, a couple of DACs that I loved and adored and were the finest that I've heard up until this point. Well, why would I do that? Well, for me, I'll tell you exactly why. Let's just jump right to the Fleetwood DeVille speakers. When I received those, I bought those full price from the website. I didn't email them and say, hey, I wanna review these. I just bought them because A, I liked the style. I liked what they said on their website about them. Uh, I talked to somebody who heard them and he said they were beautiful. And I jumped in blind and bought them from the Fleetwood website online with a credit card knowing I would pay that card off within a couple of weeks because I had the money saved up for them. Um, I bought them, they arrived. I fell in love with the looks, the fact that they were made uh, right here in the United States. Uh, I loved what the company stood for. I love that they torrified the wood. They were real wood. They weren't veneer or particle board. And when I plugged them in, I loved their warm, full, big, mid-range, right? The bass was a little lacking. The treble was a little soft, but man, that mid-range had soul and they were musical as all get out. Um, they were like a super refined clip, say, La Scala, right? They sounded more refined and beautiful than the clip La Scala. And I was so happy with those speakers. So I loved those Fleetwood DeVilles, just as I loved the Avic U150 integrated amp, which is still today the best integrated amp, hands down, that I've ever heard or experienced. Better than the Daniel Hertz Maria I have here if we're just talking about an integrated amp to use with a variety of speakers or any speaker you may want to bring in down the road. I've never heard a finer integrated amp than the Avic U150, so much so, when I reviewed that, a friend of mine in Arizona found one used and bought it, and he loved it so much, he found a second one and bought it, and then he loved the whole Avic sound so much, he bought one of the new ones. And I think he prefers the U150. He said the new ones were a little more analytical. Um, but yeah, that is a killer amp, but I sold it along with the DeVilles. I sold some DAX, I sold some other things. Why would I do that? if those were my end game pieces for a system. Well, let me put a little bit of that into perspective. When I bought those, I knew in the back of my mind they would eventually be sold, but I wanted to enjoy them for a while. Uh, in my earlier life, I've been at this for 35 years, and in my 20s and 30s when I bought audio gear, I was on this side of the spectrum. And this side of the spectrum for me is the geeky gear side the part of me that always loved the technology. And back then, I was always chasing the next best thing. And I was doing that even a couple of years ago. And it's it becomes, you go down this rabbit hole, and a lot of you know what I'm talking about. A lot of us in the hi-fi hobby do this. We buy something, we love it, and then we're, we see another thing that just looks cooler or might sound better, and we wanna hear what that could bring to the system. 
So we sell what we have and we buy this new piece. And I'll tell you, I've done a lot of that in my 20s and 30s and even 40s. And it's rare that I sell a piece and get the next best thing and I'm happy long term with the next best thing. That's because the best does not exist. The best does not exist in cameras, in audio, in pretty much anything. It's all about personal preference. But if you're about the gear more than the music, this side of the spectrum is the music for me. In my 20s and 30s, I was like the gear, the gear, and a little bit of the music, right? As I'm getting older, now 53, I'm more this way. The music is the most important for me. As we get older, as I've gotten older, I've wisened up. Uh, I can see things for what they are more clearly. I'm a much more calm person. And I knew when I bought the DeVilles and when I bought that Avic and when I bought those DAX, I knew in the back of my mind that one day they would be sold and my savings account, which is how I paid for them, would be replenished. So in my mind, I was building this system because here I am, I review gear and I wanted a system that I could uh, build in this room to the best of my financial ability and know-how that would sound the best to me in this room. And I didn't want to spare any expense as experience for this review thing I'm doing here. I wanted to hear what a $75,000 to $100,000 system sounded like to live with for a while, at least a year. And I did that for 15 months. Uh, I've changed things here and there over that time, but the DeVille stayed, the DAC stayed, the amps stayed, and uh, I really enjoyed the heck out of that system. They were some of the finest pieces I've heard. Uh, now, the Fleetwood DeVilles are not perfect speakers. They, that doesn't exist. Um, they're a little weak in the bass, but that mid-range for me, I'm a mid-range guy. That was where the soul lived in those speakers. And when I heard that, I said, this is the nicest, most haunting mid-range I've heard. These are my end game speakers. But I am not a wealthy guy. A lot of you watch this and say, man, that's Steve Huff. He must be rich. He's buying all this audio gear all the time. How does he have all this endless money and just sit in this log cabin in the woods all the time? Well, I don't have all this money. I'm not a wealthy guy. Um, you'd be uh, shocked to learn what my yearly income is. It's not much at all, not much at all. And throughout the last 20 years of my life, at least, I've saved money week after week after week. I'm a big savings guy, right? I don't blow all my money. I try to tuck a lot of it away. Um, so I save, I pay taxes, and we enjoy the little things in life. My new philosophy, it's no longer about the gear chasing because I know happiness doesn't come from the next best thing. For me, these days, it's about the music and just enjoying the music and having a system that I can just sit here at one in the morning and let the music touch my heart and soul and connect with me emotionally. And I know you don't have to spend big money to get that, you don't. Um, so don't be fooled that you need big Wilson speakers and big fancy amps to have a system that can connect you emotionally to the music. I'm doing it now with a system that is less than 20% of the cost of my last system. As a matter of fact, this system I listen to now, I prefer it in almost every way besides the looks. It's not as cool looking, but dang, does it not sound as good, if not better. And it still reaches me emotionally and touches my heart. But I sold those pieces um, because I wanted to recoup money from my savings. And I wanted to challenge myself. Now that I've heard the best I can hear for my taste in this room, how close can I get to that for under 20% of the cost of that system? So I sold everything. I recouped just about all my money. I lost a few hundred dollars at the end of the day, but I look at that as a rental fee. Like I've had lived with this stuff for a year, uh, 15 months. That's like a rental fee to me, a few hundred dollars. And quite a few months ago, I knew I was going to do this, sell off everything. But the challenge was finding a system that I would like as much, if not more, for spending and while spending way, way less. So 
I said goodbye to those DeVilles. I almost shed a tear as I packed them up. I said goodbye to the Avic U150, saying to myself, one day you're gonna regret this because this amp will power any speaker and do it with such a beautiful sound. But I knew that I had this goal, I was on a mission, and uh, it took me a little while. And when I found my new system at the right price, I unloaded all of this big, heavy, expensive stuff. I still have a closet full of gear that I haven't sold, don't get me wrong. But I recouped my savings, everything I had in that big money system, and I used a less around 15% of that, say, to purchase a new system. And that's speakers, that's amp, that's cables, uh, streamer. And I'm using just a Blue Sound Note X. I'm not using the fancy streamers. I'm using the Daniel Hertz Maria S50 system that I have purchased from Lone Crow Audio. Uh, I bought their demo. The speakers are old. They're still labeled M10. They don't have the new Ava labeling. Lone Crow said they'll send me out some new uh, labels for the speakers and boxes uh, for the speakers. So I'm awaiting those. But I was able to get a better than retail price because it was a demo slash used system. And of course, I did the review uh, for it and uh, gave Lone Crow some shout outs and links. So I would hope that I would get a little bit of a discount. Um, and I did. And it was the right price uh, that I was able to spend. And so I have this much smaller, much more simpler system now. I don't have all the, these cables and these boxes. I don't need a streamer or I don't need a DAC, I should say. Um, it's just that Blue Sound Note X going right into the DAC of the Maria and those little Ava speakers. And I got to tell you, uh, I don't have subs hooked up to them either right now because I don't need them with the Ava speakers. The bass is plentiful. They go down to around 30 hertz for these little bookshelf and it's tight, defined, tuneful. This system images like crazy uh, and it reaches me emotionally. It reaches my heart and soul just like that big money system did. Now, I'm not saying this is not a big money system. The retail price of this system is still pretty hefty for a lot of people. I've shed tears while listening to those Fleetwood DeVilles, um, but I've also shed tears listening to this Daniel Hertz system. So for me, it was about recouping money, uh, not getting too crazy in the tech game, next best thing game, which I've done a lot in life. And as I get older, as I said, the last two, three years, I'm a much more calm person. I see things more clearly. Uh, I'm a realist, right? And so I knew that I had spent way too much. But yeah, that's why I sold my end game pieces. What do I think about those pieces today? The Avic U150 is still the finest integrated I've ever heard. If you're looking for an end game, end game integrated that you'll never have to replace as long as you have the money, uh, the Avic U150, you can only find them used now. World-class phono stage, fantastic DAC, amazing integrated amplifier. The guy I sold mine to, he wrote, he was so happy. He said, this is everything you said it was in your review. And I was so happy to hear that because it's true. I speak from the heart. That's an amazing integrated amp. Fleetwood DeVille SQs are beautiful speakers, the most beautiful speakers I've ever owned in my life. I much prefer them to almost any speaker I've had, right? But I needed to recoup the funds and I was I had a challenge. I gave myself this challenge and goal, find something for less that you'll enjoy more. And I luckily I found it. So my money is recouped in savings. You know, I can breathe easy. I have a system now that's paid for. I don't owe any money on it and I'm enjoying it just as much, if not more. Why wouldn't I switch, right? So that's my reasons. And there's a lot of you out there I know who were like me and are like me, <laughs> a passionate person who loves audio and you love the gear as much as you love the music. As I said, as I grew, grow older, I'm, I'm more focused on just enjoying the music, not so much chasing the tech. But to those of you out there who are still going down those rabbit holes and you're listening to your system and you're like, wow, that new piece I saw online, I think it will, it will be better than this. What would that sound like in here? I gotta hear it. And then you sell your piece, you get the new piece. You might not like that new piece. 
So no matter what you're listening to, whether it's a $100 set of speakers, whether it's a $200 Bluetooth speaker, whether it's a $500,000 system, enjoy it. Enjoy the music and, and try not to worry so much about the gear. The next best thing will not, will not make you happy long term. Try to settle on something that sounds great to you and connects with you and stick with it. That's my advice. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a happy weekend. I have some reviews coming next week. The Black Ice Audio F-159 Phono Stage designed by Jim Fosgate. This is a tubed unit, a hybrid unit. It's pretty dang cool, guys, and I want to talk about what this thing does. Also, their FX-9, I think it is, their lower cost phono stage under a grand. Uh, I have a Burson headphone amp here I've been playing with and enjoying with my Verum One headphones. I want to talk about that. Uh, I have some budget turntables I want to talk about and budget cartridges. I reviewed that uh, Puritan Audio Harmony a while back, and that is a whew, end game turntable if I ever saw one, heirloom quality. But not everybody has that kind of money to spend. So I have other tables that I've had here for years that are, that are a budget, budget tables. And I pulled them back out of the storage and I've been listening to them. And I want to talk about my favorites among the budgets, including some budget cartridges. So uh, stay tuned for all of that and have a great weekend. I'll see you in the next one.